What's up, TechCrunchers? We are at Skydio HQ, where we're going to chat with a group of startup employees who are building autonomous drones that can track your every move. We're going to chat with their CEO and see what they're up to. Let's check them out. The basic idea for what we're doing is we think fully autonomous drones are really the future of the industry. Um, and we have believed that from the beginning and we've also believed that like the, the core technology and the core enabler there is the, the software system. So we've really been focused on building that from, from the very beginning. So I, I'm seeing kind of a lot of prototypes behind us. Uh, you want to just kind of give a long overview kind of stretching through the process of you know where this idea started translating into you know your new product the R1. For almost the first year of the company it was just uh, my three co-founders uh, working in a basement uh, self-funded so the prototyping at that stage was very very scrappy uh, so we started with just off-the-shelf quadcopter frames um, and putting media center computers and USB cameras on them uh, and and essentially starting the, the core of our software system and there's been a pretty steady evolution since then to get to the R1 um, so we built more sophisticated uh, rigs that let us like have multiple cameras uh, to, to develop more and more of the software. And then at a certain point when we had kind of answered enough of the questions there about what was going to be possible, what we really wanted the product to be, we started developing the custom hardware platform. Um, and you know, the, the basic idea there has been pretty constant from the beginning, but we've been through a number of iterations to get everything dialed in just the way that we want for, for our one. Uh, yes, yeah, so we started like the, this first prototype, AirCam one. Mm -hmm. Uh, aptly name was using basically like a media center computer, okay. um, which was not very power efficient, uh, not at all designed for this. The cameras are plugged in over USB. Uh, so there was a lot that was like not, not great about this, but it allowed us to get something in the air and start developing the software system. Um, and then, you know, I think we're just fortunate to kind of be doing this at the right time. So like after we started the company, NVIDIA announced uh, the TX1, these sort of like perfect embedded compute modules that have really powerful GPUs. Uh, and that's what we started using. So we we did the sort of off the shelf computer thing for a little while uh, and then started working on NVIDIA dev boards. What's what's up with this monster? How's, uh, how's yeah, this so one this, doing? This is a team favorite. <laughs> the the this, prettiest of, uh, of the bunch. This is the triangle rig is what we called it. Um, okay. so this is when we had uh, one uh, prototype engineer who was awesome and he design this kind of superstructure, uh, but it's still fairly, fairly clunky. But this was the first thing we built that had multiple cameras kind of facing in every direction. Okay. Um, so this was the first prototype that was basically all our custom hardware. So you can see the form factor is pretty close there. Sure. It's not exactly the final thing, but um, this is pretty close to, you know, all, all the big ideas were, were in play. And this is um, pretty much uh, all our final custom electronics. Um, uh, was was six pairs of camera pretty much like that was at least what you had to hit for the most part in your mind from the beginning? Yeah, that was a that was a fairly early design decision. Like yeah. we wanted the, the key thing that we had in mind for basically every product decision is we wanted trustworthy autonomy. We mm -hmm. wanted you to be able to trust the device to fly itself without you needing to to pay too much attention to it. And we felt that one of the real keys, one of the real building blocks to making that happen was having stereo pairs looking in every direction, okay. which has a bunch of other challenges associated with it. Like that's one of the reasons why we developed this um, this perimeter structure out of composites to like to hold all the cameras and the configuration that we needed okay. uh, and be super rigid. Yeah, um, yeah. I was I was curious about that. Was it a decision from the beginning not to make like the wings fold or anything? Because I know there's some some drones that have a similar form factor that fold up. Yeah, so it's it's something that we explored, but we thought that this was going to be like a, a superior product experience. It okay. still it still fits into your backpack, um, and it doesn't have the added complexity and weight of folding, which okay. especially for having the cameras around the outside, uh, just just wouldn't really solve. Cool. So you know, around the launch, a lot of people were talking about the cameras, kind of the self flying selfie cam, uh, which you know for a twenty five hundred dollar product, like you know, I, I think that you can see a lot more. Uh, potential in you know what what the one liner about it could be so as you as you kind of look to the future you know is it are you a selfie cam company like what what uh yeah, how do so you characterize we, it we we probably have like a mixed relationship with the word selfie i mean i think that <laughs> sure. if you just think about cameras in general 
Like, first of all, cameras are just everywhere in our lives, right? Every smartphone has one. Actually, every smartphone has at least two now. Um, some have more. The major use case for phones is taking pictures. Most social media is driven by people taking and sharing pictures and video. So cameras, pictures, video are just like a core part of our existence now and it's becoming more central. Mm -hmm. And then if you think about like, what are people taking pictures and video of? Most pictures and video gets taken of people. Like people are the most interesting subjects. Yeah. You can call it whatever you want really, but we think of this as just like another sort of evolution of the camera. It's a camera that understands the scene it's looking at and has the ability to move itself. And our first use case is, is targeted around capturing amazing content of people doing cool stuff that you would otherwise not be able to get. You know, when people when people take pictures of themselves now, almost by definition, they're not doing anything interesting because sure. they have the ability to like stand they're there and pose or, or, the, or, their, or their buddy is like, is holding yeah. the camera. Whereas this thing allows you to like, capture the stuff that you're most excited about mm -hmm. um, without having the, to think or worry about it. You know, I, it's hard to say what the category is going to be called in the okay. long term, um, but we think it's it's a real thing and it's going to be pretty big. And the, the kind of like consumer market questions. Yeah. <laughs> that's not a drill, that's a, One that's of a prototype. That's a R1 that's strapped down. <laughs> The R1 with the Hailfire yeah. uh, integration. Yeah, these, a lot of these things sort of look like drone torture chambers where we have the thing like strapped down and then beat it up. Got to do that testing.